In tonight's episode, the Siphon is finally destroyed once and for all. This allows Elizabeth to become the omnipotent, omnipotent creature of her birth, and that means that the truth about Bioshock can finally be revealed. The truth about Booker, the truth about Comstock, the truth about Columbia. Please join me for a journey through many universes, a journey through lighthouses, a journey through reality in this, the final episode of Bioshock Infinite Explained. Well, greetings guys and welcome to Bioshock Infinite um, Explained and... Um, the explanations are about to be complete as we join Elizabeth um, at the bow of the ship. I believe the combat of this game is complete and all that really is left is to um, put together the final pieces of the puzzle that make up this um, awesome plotline. Look, you can use the songbird to bring the whole damn thing down. Destroy the siphon. And that's what you want. It's the only way we'll find the truth. Pop my finger, Comstock, everything. Now, over the course of this series, as I'm sure you're aware, we've covered most of what this ending is going to entail, but it's going to be lovely to see it kind of uh, evolve right in front of us um, to kind of uh, recap um, this one more time. Now, uh, as this siphon is destroyed, um, Elizabeth will uh, gain the knowledge of all the other multiverses and universes, um, perhaps merging with her alternative selves, perhaps just simply being able to see all the universes at once as she, as she kind of exists um, uh, between those dimensions or across those dimensions. Um, so the full extent of her power um, is uh, in, uh, is revealed. And also, I think in previous videos we've talked about how she's she's able to create links between universes at that same point. Do you remember that time we were running around um, and there was the balloons and the marches and things like that and we kind of said well she's she's opening windows at the same point but of course as what we're about to see here she's also now able to open um, windows to other universes at different times because of course she can time travel but also in different locations as well. So let the craziness commence. One of many. This way. What do you mean it's a doorway? Where are you going? Oh, come on. Yes, it's this way. What Comstock said about your finger. Is there an answer here? Do you... Down here. Okay, well, a whole bunch of things to talk about there. Um, first of all, just a bit, a bit of a uh, nice little nod. We've got a big daddy and a little sister, I believe, there in, uh, in the background. Uh, the the songbird, as we've known uh, from the design plans we saw earlier in the game, is vulnerable to high um, pressure situations or, or low pressure, whichever way around it is. And uh, it's not actually killed by drowning; it's killed by the pressure um, on the suit. Uh, but of course, again, that re that weird relationship that Elizabeth has with the songbird there coming to coming to the front. He is her guardian, her protector, but also her jailer. And therefore, Songbird's death is is, is a sad moment uh, for her, not not just a kind of a, a, a great moment of um, victory. But of course, the big news is we're in Rapture. 
Woohoo! Now, um, this is uh, obviously the location from Bioshock 1 and uh, Bioshock 2. Um, why are we here? Well, uh, it's probably because Elizabeth was able to kind of see, to, try, to find a location, a place where we would be safe, but Songbird uh, would not, and, and that is under the water, but where could we possibly be safe under the water? Where better um, than the City of Rapture? Um, it's also useful um, for her in that it, her idea of... Um, one man, one city, one lighthouse uh, really does come uh, to the fore when you see the, these alternative um, realities. Um, and uh, if, if uh, from what we, if we've interpreted it correctly from the rest of the game, uh, Rapture kind of does feature in the in the kind of subplots in that um, Songbird seems to be derived from technology taken from here, as does the 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 Vigors seem to be taken from uh, the technology of the Plasmids here. Um, so the links between these two places, oh, I tried to pick up from there, but of course you can't, um, do seem to be strong now. Here is something that has been hotly debated in the Bioshock uh, uh, community forums. Uh, we're about to go into one of the little uh, dive bells, but of course if you've um, played the original Bioshock games to completion and you know anything about the plot lines there, you'll know that these uh, these Bioshock um, uh, transportation devices can only actually be used by someone related to Andrew Ryan. Um, which has... What is going on? Elizabeth, what do you mean that this is a doorway? To show you. Which, of course, does um, open the question: uh, Am I Booker Dewitt in some way related to Andrew Ryan uh, from uh, from the from the original games? Now, it could just be that you know they, they wanted to bring us to Rapture, um, and we're not supposed to think about plot lines like that, and that, and that's fine. Um, but if we're if we're adhering strictly to the, the 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 rules of this particular universe, then we have to be related to Andrew Ryan for us to actually to be able to use. Uh, th this lift. Now, someone said that there is a view of a big sister out of one of these windows, but maybe it's not this one, or maybe I've walked past it already. But um, we'll keep we'll keep our eyes peeled in case we in case we can see. Ah, uh, yes, the bathysphere. That was the 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 name I was looking for. Probably gonna regret this. Rapture is still a city at the bottom. Gloriously beautiful place. Ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as one in the sky. Uh, just as a random bit of trivia while we just we're just listening to Booker there, um the guy that does the voice of Booker DeWitt, I believe, has been chosen to be the Joker in the new uh Batman Arkham game. Um, it's going to be very interesting to hear him do a very, very different uh, voice. Opening all at once. My God, they're beautiful. The stars. Come on. Come on, it's this way. Come on. Um, so Elizabeth, at that point, is referring to the fact that uh, she's now be able to kind of see across this um, uh, system of multiverses. Damn it! I thought once we were here, I, I could fully control it. I, I thought. What is that? It's a key. Where did it come from? It's always been there. I just, I just couldn't see it. Now, one of you lovely guys was talking about this key um, in, in, in the comment section. I must admit, I haven't read up much um, about it, uh, but it appears to be the key that is given to us at the beginning of the game in that um, box. Do, do correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the, the, the key that we are given right at the very beginning of the game um, could be that key that Elizabeth then uses again to escape from her study and uh, then perhaps to go through this particular door here. Assuming that that key is given by the Lutesses, again they are kind of meddling in our affairs to allow us to um, uh, 
uh, complete our, our mission, or perhaps maybe the key is actually planted by Elizabeth or or by someone else um, yet uh, yet unknown to us. Uh, perhaps a, a, a DLC explanation behind the key might be an interesting um, kind of swerve. Now, remember what we've talked about in previous uh, videos about what we're with, if what we're about to see here is is symbolic or literal. But this idea of of the lighthouses being the doors to the universes um, could just be a, a device to help us understand it, or it could actually be that this in the, in the game law is a place that really exists, the bridge between uh, um, the, the the universes. I was trying to think. There's a, there's a movie or a film that has a, a place where you you move between uh, various universes, but my memory escapes me about what, what I'm what I mean. So let, let's continue on, and here we are. Not stars. They're doors. Doors to to everywhere. All that's left is the juicing. So universe after universe after universe after universe after universe, all the way to infinity. Every possibility, every variable, every possible choice and an alternative choice covered by a lighthouse and a door. Through many of the doors will lie the Comstock universes, through many universes will lie the Booker universes. There are a million, million worlds. But they're all reality. All different, all similar. Constants and variables. See them through the doors. You, me, Columbia, Songbird. But sometimes something's different, yet the same. Constants and variables. Yes. And there's a we've got a variable right here. You can choose which way you want to go, but the the uh, the the outcome is um, the same in each particular case. Some variables making huge differences, others making very very minor tweaks. Uh, you can hear just in the distance there the the music that you heard when you, when you initially entered uh, Rapture very very faintly on the background. Um, just to show my inner nerd, I was watching a little bit of Star Trek earlier today, and there's a there's a famous Next Generation episode where Picard um, is given it, Picard dies of a kind of a heart attack or an exploding pacemaker. Um, in sick bay, and Q appears, the kind of semi-deity kind of figure, and gives Picard a, a choice to relive his life, um, an alternative way without the pacemaker. And uh, it's I wonder if uh, Ken Levine was actually inspired at all by the episode, because essentially what happens is that there's a Picard, Captain Picard has a fight in his youth. Um, and it's that fight that leads to him having a pacemaker and so they go back and they change that incident so Picard never has the fight but in changing that one incident um, the whole Picard character is changed and instead of being a captain he ends up just as a basic kind of ensign or engineer um, with no kind of guts or uh, like kind of a kind of ambition and things like that, and it's a it's a very if you're if you're interested in this idea of variables and constants, it's a brilliant uh, episode to go and hunt out because it, it it really neatly mirrors the image of um, uh, of Booker and Comstock, how one one event can lead to two different, very two different, very, two very different people. It always starts with a lighthouse. I don't understand. Why? Because it does. Because it has. Because it will. There are so many choices. They all lead us to the same place. Where it started. No one tells me where to go. Booker. I've already been. Now I was I was uh, watching a video recommended by one of you guys. Uh, thank you very much. That was discussing this ending. Um, and I think that there's well, there are many different theories about this ending and, and different interpretations of the ending. But the one I was watching earlier today was saying that Booker and Comstock are the same person, not the same person from different universes, but literally the same person. I.e., that Comstock is an older version of Booker, and that Booker goes on to uh, goes on to become Comstock in a later life or later in his life. I don't think that's true. I think that is a misinterpretation of this story. I think that Booker and Comstock are the same person at the same time 
in different universes, or if you like, behind different doors of these lighthouses. Um, it's not that Booker grows up into Comstock, it's that Booker made a choice that goes one way, Comstock made a choice that goes um, another. Um, I'd be interested to hear if, if what you guys think about that, but I, I can link the, the video I watched in the description if you're interested, but um, I, I think that is wrong. Um, of course, as we uh, just to, uh, just to note, in case you missed it, um, we we saw lots of other Bookers and Elizabeths there. Uh, the idea being that uh, there are many Bookers and many Elizabeths. We are not the only one. In fact, there's probably an infinite number, and there are infinite numbers of Bookers and infinite number of Elizabeths con currently travelling from multiverse to multiverse, from universe to universe. All of them, in this particular case, heading towards the same destination. But so it's almost like across the infinite universe at this particular time there are. Um, um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of these little pairs of people traveling between universe and universe to try and understand what is going on so this is an event that is being repeated across uh, almost the whole of kind of time and space and that's important because as we try and eliminate the Comstock character that isn't something that we can just do by ourselves it has to happen across every Elizabeth and every Booker Now again, this is a scene open to um, lots of different, different interpretations. Let me just set the scene. Uh, this is just after the Battle of Wounded Knee, where Booker, the possibly half Indian uh, soldier, has committed some unspeakable acts against uh, perhaps his um, half fellow tribesmen, including burning down wigwams and things. Um, he's a seriously messed up young man uh, returning from war, possibly with uh, shell shock or, or post um, post war trauma, whatever. Uh, I can't remember the, the exact phrase, but um, you know, post war trauma syndrome. And uh, he comes to this point of of, of baptism. And this is the transition moment between Booker um, and Comstock. Uh, both of men are th at this precise moment are completely filled with guilt about the actions that they have done. Comstock takes the baptism, feels absolved, goes on to become a, a great leader but seriously messed up in the head. Um, Booker refuses the baptism uh, and is also messed up in the head but um, does so kind of more privately at home. Now the disagreement that's happened about this ending is how many baptism scenes there are. I'm not, certain, not actually sure it necessarily matters in the grand scheme of things um, but some people have said that that both Booker and Comstock, or let's put it another way, all versions of Booker refuse this particular baptism here that we're about to refuse, and then later on there is a second baptism scene, which or Booker goes, or Comstock goes back later, but Booker doesn't. Uh, personally, I think that actually this is this is that there is only kind of one baptism scene, and um, we we are about to see the Booker version of Booker refuse um, that baptism here, whereas Comstock w will have accepted it and um and moved on but either way this is the the the, the key transition scene it, or, or to use the words of elizabeth this is the variable at this very point here um by accepting the baptism one one man will go one way and one man uh, will go another and just from an artistic point of view it's lovely to see the game going full circle back to a baptism um 10 or so hours later I think a dunk in the river is going to change the things I've done. Let's get out of here. Hey, look. These doors of yours, they're, they're all tears, right? We'll open one up. Open one up to Paris. I want to be shut of all this. Not until we find Comstock. Comstock's dead! No. He was here. This way. 
So um, I think that that was the scene where Booker refuses the baptism, as in the only time that he does, uh, because we are Booker, of course. Uh, this uh, uh, the, the character we have played is the Booker is is the Booker that will, has refused baptism and will always refuse baptism. And, and the way she she refers back to it there, she says, "You refused the baptism," um, meaning you did, um, and, and Comstock um, does not. Now Elizabeth still needs to. Um, eliminate Comstock. She wants to stop Columbia from ever existing. She wants to stop all the problems that that's going to cause. But she needs to kind of help Booker come to the realization of the truth uh, by kind of unveiling it to him, kind of piece by piece. If she just kind of says, "Oh, by the way, you're Comstock," he's going to laugh in her face. But if she helps him to kind of, I mean, that's what she's doing here. That's why she's taking us through this this journey of seeing uh, event after event, so so that Booker can come to the conclusion himself. girl for the debt and so Booker's rewritten memory is this is the point where his memory is kind of snapped back into what uh, what actually happened Booker takes that line bring us the girl and wipe away the debt and he embeds it as in uh, he is to go and find um, Elizabeth um, for a debt that he needs to pay to these guys here, but actually he's just requoting or rehashing an event that happened many years before. Note the scene here is black and white. We're in the past here, 20, uh, 20 years in the past. In fact, we've got a calendar right there. Um, uh, this is this is history, and in a minute we'll see what happens when we kind of come back towards the future. But the girl is this 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 one this one here, and the debt is uh, paid back. Is uh, the, the the debt we're wiping away is the ones that we have uh, brought up by our gambling debts here and alcohol debts and uh, you know uh, unpaid unpaid rent and who know who knows what else. Um, this is wrong. What is this? There's no there's no baby. I remember. No, there was no baby, and if there was, I sure as hell wouldn't give it over to this guy. Booker, you don't leave this room until you do. Do it. Time is running short. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. He won't move. We can't get out. We have to hand over the baby. This is one of the constants, the things that that doesn't change from universe to universe. Once this point is reached in the life of Booker DeWitt, he does no other action other than hand over this child. Um, and the game is, is is showing us a constant very, very clearly here um, by not allowing the player to make any other choice other than the choice that perhaps they don't want to make. Go ahead. No. You can wait as long as you want. Eventually you'll give him what he wants. How do you know all this? I can see all the doors and what's behind all the doors. And behind one of them, I see him. So the male Lutess, who is part of Booker's original universe, takes the baby. The debt's paid. Mr. Comstock washes you of all your sins. And now Booker changes his mind at the last minute, thinks, no, my, oh my goodness, I can't possibly give up my daughter, even if it means um, I will be wrapped into debt. Um, and he chases. And away the debt. There was no baby. The deal was, I go to Columbia to get you. Booker, they're bleeding. Oh. I remember. But I remember. Now we've upset him. I don't expect this next bit to much of his wound. Come on. The nose bleeds because our memories are being rewritten, or in this case, actually restored to their their true, their true state. Comstock's dead. We can just go on with our lives. You don't need dead? to... You mean like Chen Lin? Like Lady Comstock? No. He is alive in a million, million worlds. It's not over because the Prophet is dead. It will only be over when he never even lived in the first place. 
This is very, very true. Although we have killed Comstock in the universe we were just in, or the universe we are in, it's not clear. There, of course, will be other bookers who failed. There will be other Elizabeths who um, failed to enact her plan properly. This is a variable, uh, she's saying to us. Therefore, if we want to stop Comstock, um, it's not just a case of one booker killing one Comstock in one universe. It's that Comstock needs to be destroyed across all universes. And she's saying that would only happen if... Um, it is done um, at at Comstock's birth rather than at his uh, death. Uh, Duet, give, bring us the girl, wipe away the debt, this is your last chance. This note placed by the Lutesses, possibly with the aim of um, aiding Booker's confusion. The deal is off, you hear me? The deal is off. Give her back. Give her back. So here is our, our one and only glimpse at a younger Comstock who looks a lot more like Booker um, at this particular point. He is still aging quicker, uh, but uh, he hasn't yet uh, completely changed into the older figure we see. Uh, our Booker has changed his mind. He wants the girl back. He runs at the, to try and stop her going through this kind of dimensional portal. Um, the Lutess is there, male and female, nattering as they uh, get to it. And the end result is perhaps the, 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 the event that... Causes it to be undone. No, 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 shut down the no, shut it down, Emma. shut down Emma. the machine, no. don't do it. Give me back my daughter. No, and Anna, who becomes Elizabeth, is now trapped or uh, exists in multiple worlds. Her finger in one, the rest of her body in the other. The, uh, the visual itself. Uh, very, very similar to that one uh, earlier in the game when uh, Elizabeth is sucked away by, by, by Songbird. Clearly a reference both times to, to leaving her father. And this time, the office in colour. Um, a lot later, um, after Booker has spent many years in remorseful for the actions that he has taken and regretting everything that he has... Uh, kind of done, but unable to do anything to change it until the Lutesses, the very people that perhaps started this chain, um, change their minds and return to try and put right what they have done. I shared this room with your regret for almost 20 years. Until one day, a man came to you, offered you a chance for redemption, a chance for us to find together. And there they are. Of course, at this point, Booker knows what's going on. I mean, Booker would Booker knows about his daughter at this point. But it's that act, the act of crossing from one universe to the other, that wipes his memory. And like the very first line of the, ga the game says, the the subject rewrites memories and, and gets all confused because uh, Comstock needs to be killed in the past. He, he cannot be killed um, uh, in in that bit, baptismal pool where we bash his head off the off the uh, off the font. Um, something more drastic needs to be done and that's what um, Elizabeth is going to try and take us to so we cross over the nose will bleed all that kind of stuff the memories are wiped and we latch on to bring us the girl and wipe away the debt The AD on the hand, Anna DeWitt. The
that's the only way to do it. Go back to when he was born, and I'll smother the son of a bitch in his crib. But unfortunately, Comstock's crib is Booker's baptismal pool, and the only way to kill Comstock is to kill Booker. And this is what um, Elizabeth is taking us to. Um, it's interesting there that the Lutesses directly interact with us there as we do this little universe bit of interaction, which implies that they are uh, aware and can see and can talk to us. They, 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 they're kind of joining us on this little journey. Um, and I'm sure at this point they'll disappear again. Yep, <laughs> they, uh, they have gone. Um, all that kind of stuff there about the male Lutess saying, I've lived it, of course, because he went across universes as well. His, his memory was all uh, mucked up by this. Um, I've never quite understood why they blocked this bit of the door here, but you, you can't look round. It's a very linear path that um, Elizabeth takes us on. Back again um, from lighthouse to lighthouse, from universe to universe. Because the finale is upon us. In order to kill Comstock in all universes, in order to wipe out the, the, the evil prophet, um, all bookers before the point of baptism need to be killed. Now, again, there is some disagreement about whether it's um, all bookers that are killed, it's all Comstocks that are killed, um, or it's all bookers that will become Comstocks that are killed. Um, it, there's various different theories. My interpretation of this ending is that all Bookers and Comstocks are killed at that point of baptism. So both Booker and Comstock cease to exist. Killed by Elizabeth, thereby kind of creating some sort of paradox and almost like kind of sealing off the whole event and making it for it, making it impossible to happen. I am aware that there are other interpretations. Lots of people have said that what is happening in this next scene is that um, it is just the Comstock variables um, of uh, Booker that are being killed. But I don't think that's the case because... Um, because she talks about smothering Comstock in the crib like before he is created, uh, and also we are Booker. Um, we are the we are the one being we are the one being killed. You know, it's it's not Comstock she's taking the journey with. Um, Comstock wouldn't choose to, uh, to 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 be to be destroyed. Are you sure this is what you want? I have to. It's the only way to undo what I've done to you. Born again. Why are we back here? This isn't the same place, Booker. Of course it is. I remember. Note that she's not wearing the necklace, which is why Booker asks who she are. You didn't. You took the baptism. You were born again as a different man. It all has to end. To have never started. Not just in this world, but in all of ours. Smother him. Smother, 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 smother. Before the choice is made. Before you are reborn. And what name shall you take, my son? He's Zachary Comstock. He's Booker DeWitt. No. We're both. So the Elizabeths from all universes unite to kill Bookers across all universe before Comstocks can, uh, before Comstocks can exist. A rather gloomy end. And as Comstock ceases to exist, as Booker ceases to exist, he can't give birth, and therefore each Elizabeth slowly disappears as well, except the last one. And the big question with this last piano ding is: Did she disappear as well? Or in fact, maybe the whole scene disappeared. Maybe the whole universe ceased to exist, so the whole thing goes together. Um, it, 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 it's an un, it's an unknown variable, I, I guess, to a, to an extent. But but um, but what a ride! Um, so Elizabeth um, and all the other Elizabeths there, or, or Anna's, or whatever you want to call them, you can see from all the different universes there. Uh, so all the different uniforms that this idea of variables comes uh, strongly into mind. You know, they're all wearing different kind of clothes. One of them looked, kind of looked like a cowgirl, one looked like a cowboy, one looked like a member of the Vox. You know, all kinds of um, different kind of outfits uh, going on there, showing the different potential paths of Elizabeths across different universes. Some of them had fingers, others didn't have fingers. Um, but Booker says to her, who are you? 
because uh, she's not wearing that necklace, which implies that that's not even our Elizabeth that we're in there. Which I guess kind of does to an extent ask the question then: Where is our Elizabeth, and um, has she ceased to exist, or is she no longer? Is she not part of that particular? Um, uh, in interaction or scene in some way or not part of that universe because she exists independently um, and then of course there's this the, the whole paradox issue there as well is is, is that um, uh, how can you be killed by someone that only exists by you living beyond that point because if Booker uh, goes on if Booker go, if, if Booker in a sense doesn't have a child then he can't get killed but that's kind of um, Elizabeth that's kind of Elizabeth's point what she's trying to get to is the point that if Booker survives, he gets killed. Now just chew that one round your head a little bit, because it does sound like a bit of a contradiction. If Booker survives, he gets killed. If Booker lives past his baptism, he will have a child, or he will get a child from another universe. That child will grow up to eventually kill him at the point before he had the child. It's a paradox, it messes with your head, but the idea is is that it completes the circle. Um, the, the, and, and that song, May the Circle Be be Unbroken and all that kind of stuff. Uh, here it is being being properly kind of, properly kind of shattered, um, because Booker no longer can exist. Uh, if he is killed by his daughter, and he always will be killed um, if he exists past it. And so, dear friends, the journey is complete. I think we can say that Bioshock Infinite has been well and truly explained. Um, if you have been me, been with me through this uh, whole journey, I think we've got, what, about um, 11 or 12 hours of footage here, even if not a little bit more, uh, then thank you so much for joining. Um, it, it would it would not have been fun if it wasn't for the, uh, the constant interaction with you guys and the comments and the discussions and the links you guys have sent me and the, the places where you point out, pointed out alternatives um, to what I have explained. Um, so, so sincerely thank you for, for joining me um, in in this series and thank you to all the um uh the, the the reddit forums that i've been through and for deaden for making his uh like kind of storyboard thing that i've that i've referred to several times throughout the series um so, uh, the, the, a huge list of thank yous and i do hope that this uh this series um is kind of like the definite um uh, Bioshock explained. Like, there's there's lots of videos that just kind of tackle that ending, and the ending is amazing, and the and the, and the twist is fantastic. But I hope this series uh, has, has has covered everything else um, that needs to be kind of covered from um, Bioshock. So is this the end? Well, of course it's not. There's lots of other things on the channel that it'd be great if you checked out. I've got my uh, tapped out videos. I've got my uh, Battlefield tutorials, Borderlands stuff. Um, just started a series of Ace Attorney. Uh, I've got lots of stuff around. Um, but and of course there may well be DLC. And if there is DLC and it's worth explaining, then um, I shall be back for Bioshock Infinite DLC explained. Uh, but do let me know if that's a series that you'd be interested in seeing, because obviously I only want to kind of put things together if if there will be an audience for. It. But of course there is one small detail we haven't yet covered, which is this. The hidden ending post credits, which I have to confess completely ruins my understanding of the game. My understanding is Booker is dead, but here he is. He's alive. Uh, my understanding is is that all versions of Booker and Comstock are eliminated, but this hidden ending post credits completely ruins that particular theory, because here we are. A Booker, at least one, if not many, have survived, and there may well be an Anna. We never quite find out. Uh, this Booker still is in debt. This Booker still has uh, a horrible, horrible apartment, um, but somehow he has got through that paradox. And to be honest, I'm not sure I can explain this. Go for it yourself in the comments section if you think you can do it better. Because it, it, um, the only possible explanation is, is for me is that the it's only the the bookers survive, but the Comstocks die. But that seem, doesn't seem to quite hang true with the rest of the narrative. So, so do your worst, dear viewers, and uh, tell me what on earth this scene um, is about. But of course, the interesting question here is again. Does Anna survive? Does Elizabeth come with him? And if she does, does she have those powers? Is she still existing across universes? Let's find out. Is that you? But I guess we'll never know. Thank you for joining me on this series. Take care.